Hi guys, this will be a short first look video and disassembly instructions for AIMA A70 amplifier, the newest and the best from AIMA at the moment. So, as usual, the first thing you need to do is take out the volume knob. Then, under the volume knob, you will have a hex nut, like that, and you just need to unscrew this hex nut. Uh, the next thing to do is to unscrew two hex bolts uh, from the bottom that are holding the radiator to the case, to the chassis, and the four same type hex nuts holding the device together uh, in the back and they are placed in the corners. Uh, once you do that, you'll be able to slide the front and you'll be able to slide the back so that's the case looks quite nice it's solid aluminium it's, uh, makes very good impression uh, yeah the front plate is uh, CNC machined aluminium it also looks very nice it's very sturdy okay so and now let's focus on what's inside <clears throat> so the first thing that got my attention uh, are these two operational amplifiers that are soldered to the board these are i don't know if you can see that you should be able to see that ne5532 operational amplifiers and uh, i was uh, feeling let down because I thought that I won't be able to change them because they are soldered to the board. But then I realized that we have two more placed in sockets on the lower level here. And uh, the stock op amps are also, and I now you won't be able to see that, I think the light is not good enough. Or maybe? Maybe not. Okay, so these are NE. 5532P, uh, but these ones will be replaceable, uh, although there's a limit on the height of the op amp. I'm talking about this limit because um, many of you, including me, would probably want to replace this op amps with something discrete. Uh, but this means that we have a limit on the size. Give me a second, I'll get my measurement tool and I'll tell you what's the limit exactly. I'm back and let's let's check this out okay so between the boards we'll have 24 millimeters and between the upper board and the deep socket we'll have 19.7 millimeter which basically means that your operational amplifier measured from the socket input to the top of the board can be let's say 19 millimeters high at most okay what else is interesting here uh, the PCB board is not very clean I don't know why uh, I've uh, never encountered this earlier in any of AIMA boards they were always very clean and very neat uh, it doesn't mean anything I mean uh, the device uh, will work as fine as it will as it would work with a very clean PCB but that's something that I've noticed the capacitors uh, I think these are uh, Rubicon uh, sorry not Rubicon by me but Nippon chemical uh, capacitors uh, each of them is rated for 63 volts and 2200 microfarads the color looks like Elna but as far as I remember Elna has a brand markings. Now oh, it's actually, yeah, it's Nippon Chemical. Yeah, the brand logo is here. So no doubt about it. But small ones here, the small black ones here are Elna Silmic 2. The ones in the back are also Elna Silmic 2. And the small ones at the top here are small Rubicons, which is basically nice. So, all in all, this looks quite neat. It's uh, easy to dis disassemble, it's easy to replace 
operational amplifiers. Uh, here we have a radiator block that's used to transfer the heat uh, from the TPA uh, 5255 that you may or may not be able to see underneath the block uh, to the chassis. Uh, I don't know what's in here. Uh, probably PFFB circuit uh, because it's shielded from noise and interference with this uh, metal shield. Um, and that's it. All in all, quite neat build. Uh, the, uh, it's easy to dis disassemble, it's easy to replace the operational amplifiers. Uh, please note one thing, that pin 1 is facing inside of the device. The pin 1 is facing the back plate. So if you'll be replacing op-amps, please note the location of pin 1 and pin 1 should be facing inwards towards the back plate. <clears throat> I think that's all. It's quite small. It doesn't get uh, very hot uh, when used. Uh, and I was uh, doing the burning for the past 24 hours. It will stay on like that for another week because I'll be out of uh, my home. I'll be uh, leaving for a short vacation. Mm. And one interesting thing that I've noted that here, uh, and this may be actually useful for some of you that are also uh, reading uh, audio science review, uh, the upper board has the revision A dated March 2024. I think, I'm pretty sure I saw the photos of this board with these two being replaceable, but I think the date was different. But the lower board, let's try to focus, yeah. Uh, the lower board says it's uh, revision A, but it's dated June 2024. And uh, that's uh, just uh, like one month ago. So I suppose there was some kind of revision in the amplifier. Also, if you'll see some pictures on the web uh, of this amplifier, you may note that some of them uh, will have a white stripe here uh, for the volume setting. Just a printout on the front plate, but it's different. Uh, this one. This, uh, this particular piece came from straight from AIMA and it's from fresh production batch. So probably there may be some differences between revisions uh, of the amplifier. I don't know if they are meaningful or they are, if uh, they are not meaningful, but here it is. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, short video. That was first look at this uh, small and neat amplifier. Uh, and also disassembly instructions and how to replace all pumps inside. See you next time, guys. Bye.